The slippery slope that us conservatives speak about is no joke, okay? In 2015, it went from gay marriage to look at where we're at now, okay? And what was the argument back then? We were born this way. We Love is love. We were born with a gay gene and have no control over who we care about and who we love, okay? Now it's turned into genetics don't matter. They mean nothing. There's no difference between a man and a woman. Like, how did we get here? Or legalizing marijuana. No big deal. No one cares about marijuana. Now they're decriminalizing fentanyl and methamphetamine and heroin. Like this is the slippery slope we speak of. So when you hear people talking about uh, wanting this stuff out of our children's school, just let me show you where we're headed. We have so many damn pedophiles in office, so many damn pedophiles running this country. I really would not surprise me. The reason we want this shit out of our schools is it, this is a slippery slope. It would not surprise me if in a year or two, they bring it to the Supreme Court to lower the age of consent, probably to 16, then probably to 14. And it sounds crazy, but just look at where we're at. We are headed towards approved pedophilia. They're already talking about it in college courses, different perspectives on pedophilia, and they won't even call it pedophilia. They call it a adult child attraction it's just we're on a slippery slope so if you'll remember this back in 2013 the pentagon workers found to have downloaded child pornography right okay there was hundreds upon hundreds of employees that were caught watching child pornography at work on their computers now 2019 house bill targets use of pentagon networks for child pornography it's still going on to this day this was in 2019 the investigation identified over 5,000 individuals, including many affiliated with the DOD, who were subscribed to child porn websites. And if you go on to read it, they were using these ch child pornography websites at work is so disgusting and despicable. And now we have people in Supreme Court that go soft on pedophilia. Do you guys see where we're headed? And that barely scratches the surface. House of Representatives staffer arrested on child porn charges. Sickening child porn crisis infecting u.s government agencies and it goes on to talk about the cia um the pentagon and uh all these different politicians that have been charged with solicitation of a minor and um all of these just disgusting charges and we don't barely even hear about this a senior state department official arrested last month for solicitating sex online of a minor Daily Beast shows that at least 22 current and former local, state, and federal employees have been convicted of crimes ranging from distribution of child pornography to conscious, shocking acts of violence against infants. I literally have to hold my tears back. Okay. In the past four years, experts say the numbers are likely far higher than what have been thoroughly documented. So when we talk about the slippery slope, no, it's no joke. It's not a fallacy. Look in the past and look at where we're at now look at where we are headed protect children at all cost screw your feelings this shalom call lima yahweh bahashim yahweh shah bahashim or kadash all praises be to the most high yahweh in the name of his son and our lord and savior yahweh shah much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increase so if you take a step back and look at what's going on around the world today the prophets are on the scene and have been accused by many as promoting hate as just being angry so the most high is not holding his tongue anymore he is validating his messengers telling you that wickedness have exceedingly polluted the earth, telling you that judgment is approaching, that nuclear devastation is approaching, telling you that mass turmoil is getting ready to break loose. All hell on earth, on a global scale, telling you that citizens are fed up and are losing trust, faith, and confidence 
and the current ruling authority. Let's go into the word. So this is what she's talking about, by the way. This is the pedo flag. <clears throat> now the pedophiles are getting their own flag. We've told you from the beginning, the ultimate goal is children. We told you this. Many people have set back and have allowed these events to gradually worsen. Falling on deaf ears. So the message has been out. The warning has been out. The interpretations of the scriptures are going out every day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Pedophiles want to be accepted. And they are claiming to be minorities. So when you look at these groups like Black Lives Matter and Tifa, the money trail goes right back to the international bankers. Their motto is order out of chaos. They fund and create the chaos and then present or give an illusion that they're trying to bring forth a solution. The old Hegelian dialectic. That's what they're doing. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now of minorities. See that? Everybody now to get benefits. When in reality, the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos are not minorities at all. That is a fabrication. Hispanic and Native families multiply fast, believing in extended families and large family support groups. So, you got these different dissonant groups jumping on the benefits bandwagon, being or self-proclaimed minorities in a bid to gain acceptance. They have rebranded themselves as minor attracted persons. And have gone so far, you can read it. So they've created their own flag. The hell is this? Independence Day? See? So when the men of the Lord are out in mass, the global elites know that their time is almost up. They know. Remember when Samuel approached the elders. They ask him, dost thou come in peace? They knew this. They understood that when the men of the Lord are out, the Most High is speaking. So he is telling the wicked that their time is up. There's a reason they're building doomsday bunkers. There's a reason that the world is feeling gross panic, anxiety, fear, great concern. The Bible says, great fear fell upon them when they saw them. Let's go to 1 Samuel 16. I'm gonna go to 1 Samuel 16, somewhere around verse four. So the elite know that they don't have much time left. They know. 1 Samuel 16 starts somewhere around verse 2. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 3. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me whom I name unto thee. 
and Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? So the elders knew when the men of the Lord are on the scene, then something is out of balance. The Most High hates a false balance. The earth is out of course. The wicked have ruled in great abominations. And also through inequity. Let's go here. False balance. Proverbs 20 and 22. Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. So generally speaking, most people can feel something is not right. That uneasy feeling before something bad occurs. Many people feel that we are walking on eggshells. That is a spiritual feeling or sixth sense. Let's go to verse. So the most high is the judge and he brings vengeance, not ourselves. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 23. Diverse weights are an abomination unto the Lord and a false balance is not good. So the earth is in balance. Wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Let's go here. We want to talk about the wicked that are ruling right now. Who are they? And why is the earth turned upside down? down. Let's go to the NIV, the New International Version, because it speaks a little clearer when it comes to this particular passage. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for one morsel sold his, I'm thinking the KJV, excuse me. Let's read it again. Hebrews 12 and 16. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. So the Edomites are ruling the descendants of Rome and Greece, so-called white man, where Genesis 25 and 25 says they are red, not white. White is a created social construct. It is not a nationality created in 1681 in the state of Virginia where they were given voting rights, gun ownership rights, land ownership rights, could testify in court and could marry outside of their race. If you were a so-called white male, you could. So they were empowered based on a new social category of white. Let's go here, Genesis. We're going to go to 6 and 4. Book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God 
came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. So today, the sons of God will be called Israelites, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they begin to marry the women of the other nations and follow the ways of their gods. <coughs> follow the ways of idolatry. Going off. Mighty men. These were the so-called global elite at that time, sons of God. But we fell for deviating from the Lord's covenant. Let's go to verse 5. And the Most High saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So there's always a tipping point with the Most High, a threshold of wickedness or a line or limit of advance. There's always a line to cross. Just like in ancient Canaan, when the Canaanites' wickedness exceeded, exceedingly polluted the region at that time. So history repeats itself. So now we're approaching a time of judgment. Let's keep going. We're going to go to 2nd Ezra 15. The book of 2nd Ezra chapter 15. I'll we'll start reading at verse 5. 2nd Ezra 15 verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So these are amendments to the imbalances of wickedness in the earth. The Most High's judgments. That's what these corrections are. Let's keep going. One moment. There was a scripture that I wanted where the wickedness of the Canaanites had been fulfilled. Yeah, let's go to Genesis 15 and 16. We're going to go there next. See? Verse 6. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So the Most High has a line that you cannot cross with him. Let's go to Genesis 15. I think it's 16. Genesis 15. Let's start here. Book of Genesis, chapter 15. Let's go to verse 14. Let's go to 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. This is ancient Egypt, not modern Egypt. Verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace 
thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So Abram is a righteous man, a friend of the Most High. Let's go to verse 16, the key point. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. See? So the modern rulers or oppressors are the Edomites that are ruling in wickedness. So there is a measurement of fulfillment of their wicked rulership. A limit of advance. Let's go back. <coughs> Second address 15 or 6. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So now amendments are coming. Judgments. Go up to verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. Let's turn down to verse 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. See? So we read when the elder said to Samuel, the prophet, do you come in peace? So there's a reason that the global elites are paying $20 million on average. Actually, it's $18 million on average. Over 400, no, Wait a minute, 1,420 has been reportedly built worldwide, underground doomsday bunkers. They're averaging 18 million apiece. 1,420 multi-million dollar underground doomsday bunkers have been built worldwide. That's what's on the books. The global elites know that they have a short time. So the judgment is near. And many people can feel it. And I've shared this story before. I was out walking my dog and there's a couple that I see quite often. And they're both into witchcraft, Edomites. They love my dog, so they always stop and talk. And the woman said, the stars are giving her a dreadful reading. She's concerned. A dark cloud is over the daughter of Babylon, America. So she sensed the judgment coming on the left-hand side through the occult. So this is not a time to be playing games. The prophets have been out and are teaching daily and hitting the streets as we are commanded. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, or Kwakadash, Marakatham. Let's get one more. <clears throat> Just thought about it. Proverbs 29. <clears throat> Book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved, hardening his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. The wicked and the two-third Israelites following the wicked. Go to verse 2. 
when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So the earth um, is mourning right now. We've been rebuking the wicked. And the wicked two-third rebellious Israelites following them. Go to verse 10. Proverbs 29, verse 10. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. So the bloodthirsty are the rulers on this earth today. Romans, Edomites, waging illegal wars and persecuting the poor and the just, the Israelites. Jump down to verse 18. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. The elect of the house of Israel is coming back to this Bible through Repentance, becoming new creatures, a new man. Let's go to verse 19. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. So this wisdom is given to the wise, to a small remnant that are going to be delivered from the daughter of Babylon, this wicked queendom under Edom. Hopefully this has been an edifying lesson. Shalom.